Now the defense for the Los Angeles Dodgers. As they wear the home white uniforms, Dusty Baker will be in left field. He'll fight a sun problem out there today, particularly Baker in left. Over in center field, first time we've seen him there this season, Reggie Smith. He's been there before, however, in his career. He has the quickness to play the position and the arm. In right field, for the sake of offense as much as anything, but a fine athlete, Lee Lacey, he too will have a sun problem as the day wears on in right field. Over at third base for the Los Angeles Dodgers, a man who's been there all season long, Ron Say, the cleanup hitter. At shortstop, a man whose bat has been begging so far, Bill Russell. And the fellow who has been zipped in the series so far, offensively, and a man the Dodgers must have on base, Davey Lopes, playing at second base. And over at first, the steady one, Steve Garvey, who's been hitting well and fielding very well. Back of the plate, Steve Yeager, who put on a show in batting practice today, hit about six of them in the seats and deep. And on the mound, the young man that we've talked about so much already, Doug Rao, left-hander, has a fine change-up. He was 14-8 and eight on the season, got off to a great start, winning 11 out of 12, and then tailed off toward the end of the year as he developed some soreness in his pitching shoulder. But he must, get, he must have control, and he must be able to get the change over the plate in order to be effective. He will not blow you away, but he can, if he is on, be very difficult to hit. For the Yankees now, the batting order, Mickey Rivers will lead off. A couple of doubles and a single last night, followed by Willie Randolph, Thurman Munson, Reggie Jackson, clean up. Lou Finella batting fifth, Chris Chambliss hitting sixth, Greg Nettles seven, Bucky Dent, the shortstop is eight, and the pitcher, Ron Guidry. And we are ready to begin game number four. Mickey Rivers to lead off, and the Yankees lead two games to one. Mickey Rivers, who came up with the California Angels, went over to the Yankees with Ed Figueroa for Bobby Bonds in 1975, the winner. And Doug Rouse's curveball, first pitch of the game, is just low inside, ball one. But you see the ball bending from Rao, and you'll see it bend most of the day. There's a fastball, and it's immediately hit into right field for a base hit. So Rivers, sitting on the fastball, got it and hit it. And so the Yankees' primary troublemaker is on the bases, Mickey Rivers. And by that I mean he puts pressure on the defensive ball club. He is a tough little guy. As I mentioned earlier, the Yankees were confident that Mickey would now streak for the rest of the series. We'll watch him edge off first to see if he goes as Randolph stands in and takes low ball one. Rick Roden is in the bullpen, but so far he is not up. But he will be the next man to get the call, according to Tom Lasorda. Doug Rao does not have a particularly good move to first base. He comes low with that pitch, and it's two balls and no strikes. To compensate for it, you'll see that Steve Garvey will appear to be in communication with Doug Rao vocally, and he does holler to remind Doug to watch him, knowing full well that his move is not really that quick to first base. I was talking to Jaeger the other day, Keith, and he says that not only doesn't he, have, he does not really have a good that good move to first base. He takes a long time to deliver the ball too, to get rid of the ball. A base runner will not really steal against the catcher. He'll he'll, uh, he'll steal against the pitcher. High pop to the right side. It's playable for Garvey or Lopes. It'll be Garvey. One out. So the old Texas Aggie, Doug Rao, gets his first out with a little help from a Michigan Stater over at first base. And coming to the plate now for the Yankees, Thurman Munson, who was fatigued in last night's ball game and openly admitted it. But it did not deter him from having a fine ball game. His fatigue has been as much emotional as physical. You know that, Tom, from our meeting with him. He's been a deeply troubled man, but somehow he fights it off when he's out on the playing field and fights only the opponents. He's batting at about his season's average in this series, just a touch above 300. Now in the bullpen and throwing, Rick Roden, as Rivers sets on first and Munson fouls it off for strike one. So it didn't take long for Roden to step up and start loosening up just in case Doug Rao hasn't had enough work lately to be sharp. Rao threw at Yankee Stadium. He warmed up in the bullpen a couple of times and came back here and threw the other day. And Red Adams said that, you know, I was working with Doug Rao, of course, that his shoulder has, you know, does feel fine, that the stiffness has gone out of it. 
The fastball is just outside. It is one ball and one strike on the Yankee catcher with Reggie Jackson on deck. Top of the first inning in game four. Token throw to first, holding Mickey Rivers close. Jackson waiting. Now ready to go now to Munson. Get on the ground to the shortstop rusher. Over the second, they've got one. Down to first, double play. Oh, Doug Lyle gets out of the inning as the Dodgers turn their third double play of the World Series. Top half of the first, Yankees fail to score. Dodgers coming up. The Yankee defense lines up with Sweet Lou Vanilla in left field. 34 having a great season. Over in center, Mickey Rivers. Great speed out there. What an asset it is. In right field, Reggie Jackson. Son will bother him as the day goes on. Inside defense, steady Greg Nettles at third base. At shortstop, it'll be Bucky Dent, who's never stepped on a foul line in his life. Over at second base, Willie Randolph. And down at first base, it'll be Chris Shemblis, still starting. There's been a lot of talk that Cliff Johnson might get a call unless Chris's bat came alive, but he's still there. And back of the plate, the captain, Thurman Munson, and on the mound, Ron Guidry. Coming out of the shower, as Bill White said a while ago, weighs about 153 pounds, but he will bring the ball to the plate well in excess of 90 miles an hour. The Dodgers had to get a lift from that Yankee top of the first. Rivers leading off with the line base hit, and then the Yankees failing to do anything with it. There's the Dodger lineup. Davey Lopes, Bill Russell, Reggie Smith, Ron Say cleaning up, followed by Steve Garvey, Dusty Baker, Lee Lacey, Steve Yeager, and Doug Rao. The DH not being used this year. It's used on an alternating basis in the World Series. This is the year for it not to be used. Davey Lopes, zero for 13 in the World Series, 133 in postseason play. And Gidry's fastball is high and tight for ball one. This little guy's a heck of an athlete. They had time trials in spring training, and only Mickey Rivers blocked a faster time than Gidry. He's gone inside to Davy Lopes now. 92 miles an hour. The speed registered on that pitch, so Gidry is right up there. Nettles is back of the bag at third. Lopes swings and fouls it at the plate. Two balls and one strike. So they are giving uh, Davy Lopes again some room to bunt the ball down the third base line if he can put it down. There you see the position of Nettles and he's not moving on the pitch. Yet, of course, then Lopes has made no offer at the ball except for a full swing. Three balls in one strike. Davy Lopes. Takes a look down at third at Preston Gomez, who's coaching there. Jim Gilliam, the coach at first. The story of Davey in the series so far. Jackson takes ball four. So the Dodgers get the leadoff man on. I tell you this, if Ron Guidry has any nerves at all, he is trying to overcome them by being quick to the plate. That's true. Now, let's see if the Dodgers run Lopes. Martin elected not to run Rivers. I think Tom is going to be a more aggressive manager, Howard. I think he's going to try something. He knows he's got to get that guy at first base going because that's the key to his offense. Now Davey Lopes will have a look at Gidry. Try to time him, figure him out. Gidry comes to the plate to Bill Russell. Strike one. Fastball moving. You can see that one move away from the right-handed hitter. There's the move. That's what Davy Lopes wanted to see. That's exactly what Davy Lopes wanted to see. He had out there, he wanted to see that step coming over toward first base. One more time. Looks like he's got him already. He really, <laughs> you can see that, you fans. He really read Gidry's motion, even as it began. There he goes. The throw. No. Like he didn't have a chance to get him when he started. He made that play, that play very close to second base. Munson gets rid of the ball so fast, it's really incredible. He got in there, just got into the tag, Lee Randolph's tag. He's got a big lead, and 
Gidry takes a long time to get rid of the ball, but Thurman is so quick behind the plate, he makes his play a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. That's what the Dodgers have to do. They have to try and make Thurman not to throw the ball. Put the pressure on him. Take it to him. The Dodgers have got to be aggressive on the field. Last night, Lopes walked, stole second, couldn't get home in the first inning. Russell swings and misses, and he's gone. So the man who struck out only 43 times all season long is whipped by Gidry. Now it'll be Reggie Smith playing center field today. When you force Smith to go to the right side of the plate, you take away a lot of his power. I'll go through the numbers again. Left-handed, he had 27. Right-handed, he had five home runs. Davey Lopes now will edge and get his big lead off second as he might. And Gidry pours the fastball past Reggie Smith for strike one. Nobody hardly knew Ron Gidry was on the Yankee ball club a year ago. Even this spring, he was still in the bullpen. But then suddenly, he was very prominent. Swing and a miss for strike two, and he is not fooling around. There were many things going on behind the scenes. Some in the Yankee hierarchy wanted to send him back to the minors because of his poor spring. And then when the deal for Mike Torres came along, some said send Gidry in that deal along with Ellis. Fortunately, they never did. He chases Lopes back to second base. Not only is Smith on the record without the power from the right side, but he hit for 282 righty, 316 lefty, Keith. Two strike pitch to Smith outside. Not that much off the mark either. One and two. If you remember last night, Keith, we had this shot, the center field shot. Thurman Munson was moving around with Mike Torres. Mike liked him move it, shift inside, shift outside. Now, with Gidry, he stays pretty much behind the plate and he'll just move his glove. See how he's right behind home plate there? Yep. Last night, if he wanted to pitch, he'd move his entire body to the right side or to the left side. Certain pitchers will want that. Certain pitchers will just want the glove to be moved around. Oaks with a big lead at second base. The gap in the outfield defense, right center. Get on the ground to Greg Nettles at third. Even with the bag, throws him out, two down. Lopes still at second. Well, I'll tell you, the Dodgers uh, didn't do much with Don Gullett. He was bringing the ball to the plate at 94 miles an hour. They didn't do much last night, really, except for the one mistake to Torres. He was bringing it up there at 94 miles an hour. Ron Guidry is throwing in that 92, 94 range as well. So the heat has affected the Dodgers so far, the heat on the pitching mound. If you got a little well, heater on the mound, you can give the Dodgers trouble. There's no question about that, Keith. And these guys, this is the first time I've seen Guidry throw, and I'm impressed because he's... He's sneaky. He gets to that point and then just pops the ball. Two out now. Davey Lopes let off with a walk. Stole second. He's still out there. The batter is Juan Say, the cleanup hitter. One for ten in the series. And he takes a strike. Pass ball. Swing and a miss. It's two strikes. 94 miles per hour. Gidry, a feature, fastball on a curveball, and he'll throw a change up once in a while. Talking to Thurman this morning, Thurman was getting some work done on the tray ball. There's Lasorda. He said he doesn't fool around with him. He's strictly a power pitcher, and he's going to come right at you if it is hard stuff. Good curveball. Ron Say to end the inning. So the Dodgers get the leadoff man on. Can't get him around. After one inning of play, we have no score. Oh, it's a summer day in Southern California. 81 degrees, looking down on Dodger Stadium, the parking lot, the patch of green, and it's real grass, folks. Grows very well here. And the middle of the Yankee batting order, Reggie Jackson, Lou Finella, and Chris Shambliss against Doug Rao. And Doug's in with a strike to Reggie. Reggie, two for nine in the series with one run batted in. Doug keeps it low. That's where Jackson likes it. Down the left field line, it'll go to the corner. Should be two bases. Dusty Baker over to the line. Jackson will go standing at second with a double. See what I mean, Tom? Got to follow that scouting report. You got to pitch him up and in. Just sort of cued the ball past 
Ronnie Say at third and went right down the line for a stand up double. And once again, the Yankees have the leadoff man on. And once again, Rick Roden gets up in the Dodger bullpen to begin throwing. And this fella deserves a lot of credit. Billy started to use him regularly from midseason or thereabouts on. And he wound up hitting 330. He is currently the Yankees' leading hitter in the series, 5 of 11, hitting 455. He surprises you. Lou Pinella, Doug Rao, Jackson at second. No score. Top of the second. The Yankees at bat. Fouled off. You can see him trying to go to right field here, Keith. He's got nobody out. He's got a runner at second base, and he's going to hit the ball on the ground or in the air to the right side, the right field. Get Reggie over to third base with one out and get Chambliss a shot at him. Third base and one out. Right. I was surprised that Munson tried to pull that outside curve that led to his hitting into the double play in the first inning. Big hole inning. over there, too. Big hole down the right field line. They're pitching him out there, too. That's unusual. It's, maybe he's going off the plate. He might come back inside hard here. Lou's job, and he knows it, is to get the ball on the ground on the right side. Get the runner to third. There it is, right down the right field line. Should score Jackson. Reggie pumping around third. The throw. Lacey goes to second. Jackson scores. Yankees lead 1 0. So Lou Pinella continues to do a steady going job for the New York Yankees. Let's look at it again. Ross throwing it on the outside. Lou reaching out and getting exactly the pitch he wanted to hit it exactly where he wanted to right field. To at the very least advance the runner and if a hit, as in this case, score Reggie Jackson. The batter now, Chris Chambliss. Chris takes ball one. Chris's dad, the Reverend Carol Randolph Chambliss here, has been a Navy chaplain for 21 years and flew in for the day's ball game from the Naval Air Station in Memphis, Tennessee. That is going to the left field corner. Baker over and knocks it down. Lou Pinella goes to third and Chambliss is in with a stand-up double and the Yankees are jumping on Doug Rao in the top of the second inning. They really are, Keith, and that's the first typical Chambliss hit for Chris in this World Series. When Chris is right, when he's whipping that bat, He's not just a steady percentage hitter in the 300 area, but everything is a line shot. Rick Roden. That might be it, Keith. Yep, this might be. He gave the sign to Davy Loops. Go to the mound. There's Roden in the bullpen. Go to the mound, talk to him, stall for a little time. Tom is on the, Tom the sword on the top step of the dugout, Dodger dugout. He's going to go to the mound here. Three this of the four. Be all. Tom, note that three of the four hits by the Yankees have been by left hand. There's a ringing line drive by Mickey Rivers in the first, and Jackson and Chambliss going the opposite way here in the second. So time is called, with Reggie Jackson having doubled the lead and has scored on Pinella's single. Lou is now at third base as a result of Chris Chambliss double down in the left field corner pretty much the same place that Reggie Jackson hit his. They have not hit a ball up the middle as yet. There have been two doubles to left and a single down the right field line. So Tom Lasorda and just taking as much time as he can and now he's going to call for Rick Roden. So time is out here with the Yankees leading one nothing and threatening to get more and Rick Roden will be the next pitcher. Rick Roden on the mound, as you can see, his seasonal record, uh, 16 and 10. In postseason play, he appeared in game three of the playoffs, pitched four and a third innings against the Phillies, gave him two hits in relief of Bert Hooten. Doug now going back into the dugout. And in the World Series, in game number one, he was in for an inning, hit for two hits and uh, one run. Keith, as you know, Rick Roden is a remarkable story and the motif of Tommy John. When he was eight years old, he slid down a plastic slide, a pair of rusty scissors punctured his knee, developed osteomyelitis, the knee, the whole leg indeed, atrophied, the right knee was in effect destroyed. For four years, he wore a brace. At age 12, underwent another operation to remove part of the left knee so the left leg would not outgrow his right. Nonetheless, he came on to be what he is today. It was that medical history that caused many teams to overlook him as a potential major league pitcher, but not the Dodgers with their scouting system. Roden will face Greg Nettles, 
Bucky Dent, and then Guidry with nobody out. Greg One run in. Vanella is at third. Shambliss is at second. Doug Rao through 14 pitches. Vanella and Shambliss, of course, belong to Rao. And we'll see what Roden can do. They give in the outfield left center to Greg Nettles. Roden's first pitch, a fastball, just outside. Keith, you notice here, too, the second baseman and the shortstop are playing back. This is a situation where you've got a runner at third and second base. You can't bring your infield in and then get, take a chance of giving up the runner at second base. You've got to play those men back. And it's almost like giving up a run if Gray can hit a ground ball to either the second baseman or the shortstop. Hits it right at Davy Lopes. He'll go to first. Vanella scores. The Yankees lead two to nothing. Batting eight. Number 20. First out of the inning. Yankees with two runs in now. Batter will be Bucky Dent. The Yankees shortstop. Four for ten in the series. Now you can see the different infield position. They brought everybody in. Right. With a runner at third base and one man out. They brought Lopes in. They brought Russell in to cut off the run at home plate. They know they're down two to nothing. They're not going to give up a run in this situation if they can help it. Not likely they'll give Bucky anything good to hit at either with Ron up next and not having hit all year long under the designated hitter rule. They're also looking for a squeeze play. That's why Jaeger was that far outside of that yeah. pitch. One ball, no strikes to Dent. Roden comes just a little high with that pitch. Steps out, has a look at Dick Hauser. Coaching at third, Bobby Cox coaching at first. You know, Billy Martin has squeezed, you know, almost at any time. He squeezed the Chambliss in the playoffs against Kansas City. You have to be very careful against him. Three balls and no strikes to Bucky Dent. What you have to do, don't you, Tom, in this kind of situation is pitch to the batter as if you've got him two strikes and no balls. Everything very cautious. Well, the pitcher's coming up next. They wouldn't mind having a man on first base. That time he nips the outside corner with it, and it's three and one. It would set up the double play possibility for them. Yes. You can't pitch like you're ahead of this. I mean, way behind this hitter. You do have to be. You have to be very fine in this situation. Ball is hit on the ground. The right field. That'll score another run, and the Yankees lead three to nothing as Shamblis spikes the plate and then hit a low outside pitch to right field. And Little Dent has gone unnoticed in this series, but that was his fifth end of the series and his 11th trip to the plate. So he's at 455 too, and he's become a very consequential factor in the Yankees' play. So New York last night got out to a 3 0 lead in the first inning against Tommy John. They have scored three runs in the second inning today. All three runs charged to Doug Rao. There's the bunt by Gidry. Good one out in front. Jaeger to first base, and they get him. The sacrifice for the pitcher, Gidry, as dead goes to second. Two down now, and we'll go back to the top of the order Mickey. for Mickey Rivers. Rivers. This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball, intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of the game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Mickey Rivers single to lead the game. First time up against Rao. Against uh, Roden, rather, his single off Rao. That's sharply off the facade of the Dodger dugout. They've cut the size of the dugouts, too, Keith. I noticed that yesterday. They've moved uh, the batting racks over so they can get photographers and everybody else down there. Well, I think the building is as full today as it was last night, not far from it. Even though they've trimmed the dugout, they're still spacious in this particular ballpark. That's Doug Rao. Disappointed. Young... Just not ready. One strike pitch to Rivers, high and away. Mickey Rivers, who's very fond of this part of the country, said when he got here the other night, I feel like I'm home. Playing like it, too, isn't it? 
He's turned his game on, that's for sure. One and one coming. Foul. <laughs> Looks that like he's taking target practice <laughs> over here, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. He really bit some fella down there trying to grab it. Mickey wants to get done early. Figures he'll pop over to Malibu. <laughs> And an hour or two on the beach. It's warm enough. Crowd very quiet now as the Yankees have scored three runs to lead three to nothing. Count on Nicky Rivers, one and two with two out and dent at second base. Chops it foul. Got a National League umpire behind the plate today and Jerry Dale. Surprising number of Yankee fans out here, Keith. Yep, a lot of Might be because the Dodger fans are so quiet. <laughs> That's good to too. <laughs> Maybe we have a lot of Dodger fans that converted to be Yankee fans here in the last two days. One and two to Rivers. Struck him out on the bad pitch. Ball was well out of the strike zone. He got Mickey. And so the inning is over, but it's a big one for the Yankees. After one and a half, New York leads the Dodgers three to nothing. It'll be Steve Garvey, Dusty Baker, Lee Lacy for the Dodgers. Bottom of the second inning, the Yankees lead three to nothing. Ron Guidry delivers to Garvey, and he hits it a mile high to the infield. Down come the glasses for Chris Shambliss at first base. One out. Other scores, Notre Dame starting slowly, beat Army 24-0, and Pittsburgh jumped on Navy 34-17. Matt Cavanaugh is back at quarterback now, and the Clemson Tigers still showing some fangs. Beat Duke today 17-11. How do you figure the Blue Devils? Clemson's got pretty decent football team this year. They beat Georgia, Georgia Tech back-to-back. -back. Not too bad, I agree. But our producer, Chuck Howard, was raving about Duke. Well, Everyone in mother. their life must have a moment of anguish. Gidry on the outside corner with a fastball to Dusty Baker, who's three for 12 with a home run and three runs batted in in the World Series, and it all happened last night for him. Outside corner, strike two. Rick Roden in the Dodger dugout, thinking, talking. He's sitting right alongside Red Adams, the Dodger pitching coach. Baker hits it to right. That's the first time the Dodgers have been able to get the ball to the outside, and they drive Reggie Jackson back to the wall as Baker hit it well. Ball carries better here in the daylight than it does at night. He hit it well. He just didn't get around on a good fastball upstairs. Hit it all the way to the warning track. The ball will travel better here, Keith, during the day. I was talking to Grody and Garvey and a couple of the others. At night when it's damp, early in the year in April, and then this time of year in the, for the night games, the late games in September. This is where the ballpark is building a ravine down in here. And when it gets wet, the ball doesn't really travel very well at all. But during the day, when it, the sun's out, it's nice and warm. The ball travels very well here at Dodger Stadium. So you Lacey. like to pitch here in April and September at night? Lacey, to, the batter. I used to oh, love to pitch here. This used to be a pitcher's ballpark. Home plate used to be 10 feet back from where it is now. The, the, the walls uh, used to be 405 at center field. It used to be 340 down the line. Hi, it's two and one to Lee Lacey. By moving the plate out, they have uh, shortened the outfield perimeter a little bit, but there's an extraordinary amount of foul room area here where you can get to the ball. That's on the screen. This used to be a ballpark, Keith, where you could just pitch away and let the hitters hit the ball the other way. It's very difficult to hit the ball out to the opposite field. I really did enjoy pitching this in this park from a pitcher's point of view. 2-2 two -two count now. The Dodger right fielder Lee Lacey. He fouls it off again. Lacey 266 batting average on the season. In the playoffs, one for one as a pinch hitter and in the World Series, one for one in that 12 inning game that started the series at Yankee Stadium. Fine athlete. Gidry is high and throwing at 95 miles an hour when he reaches back. Billy Martin in the Yankee dugout. New York leading 3 0. Dodgers batting in the bottom of the second inning. Lacey strikes out, and the Dodgers go in order in the bottom of the second. So after two complete innings of play, Ron Gidry looks mighty tough. Yankees leading the Dodgers 3 0. 
We go to the top of the third inning now in game number four of this 1977 World Series. The Yankees with a 3 0 lead, two game to one lead. It'll be Willie Randolph, Thurman Munson, and Reggie Jackson against Rick Roden. And the ball is bounced toward Russell at shortstop. Willie's gone. Tom, your talk was interesting about the way Dodger Stadium used to be. You said it was a pitcher's park. Is it now? I think it's a much more fair park now. Uh, Howard, I was talking to Garvey yesterday. He thinks it's still a pitcher's park. I think it's a pitter's park now. You just look, you know, you're getting two points of view. There's Reggie Jackson on deck. I think with a new ball, the ball obviously is livelier this year. The new dimensions of this ballpark. It is, I think it's a hitter's park now. You're also talking to the vice chairman of the pitcher's union, folks. That's true. <laughs> Might be the chairman. <laughs> Munson. Fouls it way back into the crowd and it dribbles down to become a souvenir. Rick Roden completed only four games in 31 starts this past season. So he does not have a record of finishing what he starts, even though he has been a fine pitcher with a record of 16 and 10. There's a picture of Walter O'Malley's creation right there. On the corner, strike. It's a beautiful ballpark. Immaculate and well run. This together with Royal Stadium in Kansas City. They have to be the two most beautiful ballparks at the moment. Well, he struck it out, and that pitch was outside the strike zone, but it was one of those flamers that Roden can give you. And to be effective, Roden will get you out of that high fastball, gets it moving a little bit. 90 Watch. miles an hour. Not only 90 miles an hour, but not a good swing by Thurman. Leaning out over the plate, reaching. With two out, the base is empty. The Yankees on top, 3-0. Here's Reggie Jackson double to the left field corner and scored the first Yankee run. Ball one. That's the way to try to pitch, Reggie. Tight. MVP in the American League and the World Series, 1973, with the Oakland A's. Ball two. They're all trying to go in there. Hard stuff up and in. Get the ball away from the big end of that bat. Low. Three balls, no strikes. With two out now. Advantage, Jackson. Gap in the outfield, left center. High to left. Tough sun field this time of the day. Baker handles it. So Rick Roden gets the Yankees in order in the top of the third inning. After two and a half, New York three. Dodgers nothing. Frank Sinatra amongst the crowd again today. Once he made autumn in New York popular, but now he's strictly Los Angeles. And Palm Springs. Steve Yeager. The pitcher, Roden, and Davey Lopes, the top of the order for the Dodgers as we move to the bottom of the third inning. Ah. Jaeger fouls it off. So the first pitch is a strike again. The only batter that... The young man Ron Guidry has been behind was the opening batter of the game, Davey Lopes, whom he eventually walked. Jaeger fouls another one away. You don't give up all that much, though, when you're pitching or when you send Roden to the plate. Because during the course of the season, Rick had his moments with a bat. He can hit. That might get us. Thurman looking up into that bright sun. Pulls it down. Tough. Tough play for Thurman. One out. Now the pitcher, Roden, who will take his cuts. He is a good hitter, Keith. Get three home runs, I believe, this year. Tied with couple other pitchers in the National League for a home run lead. Like Tom Seba, but Seba got his today, folks. Don Newcomb came up to visit us, say hello, and told Seba, I hit seven in one season, which he did. He was a fine pinch hitter, Newcomb. So 
Go with Don Drysdale with his ball club. There's a shot to left. Vanella going hard. Can't get it. Ball bounces into the stand. Double. As we said, Roden is a good hitting pitcher. Boy, he took a good swing at that ball, too. He just missed the home run. That ball hit down there just short of 330 foot mark. Lou ran into the wall. Pinella ran into the wall. I don't know if he got hurt or not. A little shaken up. Look at that swing That's again. That's a good swing. That's an everyday player's swing right there. Now, Pinella's going to try and get to the ball. He can't get there. He runs into that wall. This is a pretty good shot. And that wall is metal. Those blue plates out there are metal. Ground rule double for Rick Roden, who hit 231 on the season. He's on second base now. The Yankees leading three to nothing, and Baby Lopes is up there. That's fired up the people in the stand. That's for sure. Pitch bounces at the plate. Something's got to fire the Dodgers up there here in the third inning. That's the first base hit that they've got. They've just got to get rolling. They've got to get their offense rolling. There's the man that's in charge of Let's say first gear of that offense. Yep, he's the Davey trigger. Lopes. You've got to get him going. Roden off second. One out. Strike. One and one. <laughs> he really leaned into that baseball. A confident hitter. Roden? Yeah. Good pitch. One ball, two strikes now on Davy Lopes. See what effect Lopes conceivably has on this ball club. That's a fly ball to the right side and foul ground and will be out of play. Three rows deep. Temperature 81 degrees when we started the game. Not quite as hazy as it was yesterday and last night. One and two. Get on the ground, foul. At first base, Shambles. Hustling after it. Now the crowd starting to build its applause. With one out, Roden at second. Yankees ahead, three nothing. It is low, two and two. Dodgers batting bottom of the third. Lopes hits it to straight away center, hits it well. Rivers going back, going back, going back. Oh, he did it! the ball just keep carrying and carrying looks like a little slider right in the middle of the plate and they've got a good swing on it Mickey Rivers giving a chase but it just kept going 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 carrying that's a long way of course the longest part of this ballpark it's that ball about 420 feet probably suddenly there is sound in Dodger Stadium as Bill Russell hits it on the ground to Bucky Dent Bucky throws him out that's the second out of the inning now we'll have a look at Reggie Smith. Suddenly the Dodger dugout has some life in it. That home run brought the people to life here at Dodger Stadium. Also the Dodgers as well. That's what they need. They need a little spark in their dugout. I thought Mickey was surprised by the way that ball carried. First he turned right. And then he swung around and looked back left. And still going toward the fence. I'm sure he thought he was going to have a shot at it. Smith fouls it off. For strike one, Reggie tapped out to Nevels, his first time up. An instance of the pitcher helping himself, Roden doubled, ground rule double, was on base with Lopes connected for his home run. At strike two on Reggie Smith, 94 miles an hour. So he's a flamethrower. Oh, 
That's high. Mike Torres made one mistake last night. It cost him three runs to Dusty Baker. In the same third inning. Yep. Foul. They're getting closer to us, <laughs> Howard. <laughs> You're the one who looks shaken. <laughs> Play was almost made on that one by television and film producer David Walton. Foul again. Boy, that home run came out of the blue. Dead center field. And when you look at that graphic, that emphasizes the point. I pop it'll be out of play. I've often wondered why or how or if someone has. I've never heard of it. Someone the railings around these uh, balconies here are quite low. Someone someday probably is going to get carried away reaching for one of those and go tumbling out of it. Here he Looking, Smith strikes out. But the Dodgers strike back, get a double from Roden, a homer from Lopes, and it's now Yankees three, Dodgers two. Another look at Lopes' home run to make the point of carry on a well-struck ball in this park in the daytime. Right, Keith, and watch Rivers particularly. He kind of lopes back. As I said, he swung right now, he whirls around, swings left. And you get the feeling he thinks he's got a shot at the ball, but the carry is there. Dead center field. That carried about 415. 410 to 420 feet, let's say. Little fella with occasional power, but very great power. Lou Pinella now for the New York Yankees as we go to the top of the fourth inning. With a score now 3-2. Yankees followed by Chris Chambliss and Greg Nettles. Lopes hit one like that here in the ninth to beat the Mets out of a game after the Mets had traded you, Tom. Rick Roden's pitch is high, and Lou Pinella came right out of his shoes trying to jump on that piece of candy, but he fouled it off. Lou having a single, knock in the first run of the ball game, and later came on to score. Tomorrow, same time, 4 Eastern, daytime. Then back to New York, Tuesday, 8 Eastern, game 7 if needed will be Wednesday, 8 Eastern. Of course, the Dodgers are going to have to win a game out here to send all of us packing back to New York. One and one now on Lou. Two and one. They're still giving Vanilla right field line, and that's where he hit it the last time, but he shatters his bat as he rolls to Russell and Bill throws him out. Ball in on the hands, and he broke his bat. One out. Chris Chambliss. Roden has been extremely effective since coming in. In that second inning, he's allowed just one single at a right field ground ball through the hole by Bucky Dent. Knock in the third Yankee run. First time Shambliss will have faced Roden in the ball game. He doubled down the left field line off Doug Rao, the starter. Look on Rao, one inning plus, three earned runs, four hits. Story on Shambliss in the series. Fouled at the plate, Chris, near Acosta Junior College, and played baseball at UCLA. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Where are my boys playing today? Who are the Trojans playing? Trojans are playing Oregon, I think, right now. Campus hits it to Lopes. Short hops it. Two down. For those of you around the country who are not familiar, Tom Seaver, of course, a devout follower of USC. Like Frank Gifford, but much younger, Tom. <laughs> Two down, bases clean. And Roden's pitch to Nettle. 
first man that Rick faced when he came on in relief for Brown, he got Greg to roll to Lopes. In the process, Greg knocked in a run, third run of the game for the Yankees. With a foul tip, Yeager hangs on. The man who lost last night's ball game is in the Dodger dugout, Tommy John. Probably will be the man in number seven if we get that far. Study in the Yankees. One one to Nettles. One two. Oh, he's facing good pitches right here to Greg. That was a 91 mile an hour fastball, sinking fastball. The pitch before that was a changeup. Warming to the task. Two very good pitches. Let's see what he does here. Good control. Rick has his control. He'll give the Yankees trouble. He go in and out, and he's got a good slider. Change speeds once in a while. 2-2, two, two, Greg Nettles. There's a changeup. Oh. Three and two with a fastball hitter up, two outs, nobody on. What do you throw if you're a pitcher? He's going to be guessing dead fastball, I would believe. Are you going to challenge him, try and throw it, throw it inside, sink it away, take a chance? Power against power. Changeup to Garvey. To Roden. Inning is over. So Rick Roden, very effective against the Yankees. After three and a half, three two to New play. York. Ron Say, number four man in the order, hits it high and deep to left field. Way back and Panella jumps. Oh, got it! What a great catch! Oh, great boy, catch. what a play! I thought it was gone when he hit it. Lou Panella made a fine catch at the wall. Panella will give you everything he's got and more. He is not a man with foot speed, but if he can get to a ball. He's got it. It's gone. You can be sure of that. And this play is a vivid evidence. That's a fastball right in his warehouse. Hit it real well. Up over the fence, too. Yes, sir, he absolutely robbed. Ron Shea. Great play. By Lou. One out. Garvey up. Takes strike from Ron Gifford. Incidentally, tomorrow, as the professional football games are posted, we'll keep you apprised as you watch the World Series with us of what's happening in the NFL. Inside with that pitch. Count is one and one now on the Dodger first baseman, and Ron Say got to be feeling like his pocket was picked. Or at least his uh, batting average in the series. Garvey now at one and two. Considering before the game today, moving in a little closer to the plate against the left-handers. Sometimes, uh, if you're reaching for the ball, that ball will come out of that crowd on you. Fouled, and it's fouled off Thurman Munson. Thurman's going to take a minute to take off the impact of that one. Watch this view, fellas, of that catch by Pinella. It's a different one from our outfield camera, a third view. So he thinks it. it's gone. Look at that. He thinks he that really ball did. is way out. Watch. Oh, what a great, great shot, guys. Shot. Beautiful. Nice shot. Good work, Mr. Forty. Two and two now as that Gidry pitches outside to Steve Garvey with one out. Nobody on. The crowd still buzzing over Pinella's fine leaping catch in left field. 3-2 ball game. The Yankees leading the Dodgers in the bottom of the fourth inning. Oh, he reached back for something that time. Didn't he miss low? But he fooled him. He really <laughs> fooled him. That's a three and two situation with a fastball pitcher. And he's got to guess the fastball and throws him the breaking ball. Ronnie was, I mean, uh, Steve was really fooled on the pitch. Now, here's another power hitter, Dusty Baker. We've talked about him ever since the series began. And the power of this Dodger team is worth talking about because it reflects a change in the construction of the Dodger team. You look at it over the last 20 years and more. We'll develop this as the inning progresses. I got to think he's a prime candidate for the National League Comeback Player of the Year, too, considering what he's done. Off leg trouble and low average last year. That ball is hit toward the hole, but Nettles scoops over and 
closes the door and throws him out. And so the bottom of the fourth inning is highlighted for the great catch of Lou Pinella and left the score. Yankees three, Dodgers two. For the Yankees now, Bucky Dent, Ron Guidry, and Mickey Rivers against Rick Roden. This ball game has already had some highlights. Dent singled his first time, rolls this one to Davy Lopes. That came apart in his hands as Roden jammed him. And one more look. Now watch, we're going to take you right in tight on Lou Pinella to show you just how high he Run went up. Guidry. That's another one of those Pitcher. fancy new technical devices that we have come along with to bring you even closer to what's going on in competitive sport. One out for the Yankees, and Guidry is up. We're going to miss by the little left-hander, and I say that because he only weighs about 153 pounds. USC 19 nothing second quarter over Oregon. It's two strikes on Gidry. A Tom smile Fever crosses does. Tom's <laughs> face. <laughs> Look at him. All over him. My alma mater doing well. Where Gave were you the last little Saturday? boy as candy. <laughs> Where were you last Saturday? That's right. He was watching was Bear sick. Bryant's Crimson Tide. He was sick and crying last Saturday. My boys lost. Two-strike pitch is up high to Gidry. You know, you saw how Jaeger caught that ball. Every good catcher in the major leagues is going to stay down. Jaeger will stay down and give the umpire a good view. And he's given Roden a good target with his glove, and he stays down. Doesn't come up and block the umpire's view of the strike zone really one of the finer aspects of the game of baseball. Not many people recognize it, but now watch how he stays down as the ball comes to the plate. Round ball, Lopes, gravy bounce. Gravy throws him out. Two down. Roden is doing a fine job. He's given this Dodger club new life. Drew Lopes' home run with Roden himself on. Cut them back into a one-run ball game from a 3-0 deficit, but it's his pitching, his containment of the Yankees that's got to uplift the Dodgers. And that's what's happening. Mickey Rivers, single, struck out swinging. Not that his bat was inconsequential. Mickey let his hand slide up the bat handle, and that got Ron Say coming in a hurry. Ronnie playing him on the grass at third. Watches it on the ground to Russell. Russell's throw, got a hurry. Oh, Just good play. Play. The Dodger dugout doesn't like it either. Bang, bang play as they get Rivers, and Roden now has retired the Yankees. He's been able to put 10 away in order. 3-2 New York. The old look and listen play here, huh? The preceding message on behalf of Major League Baseball. Now you watch here. I don't know. Uh, Oh, so close. I said the Dodger dugout. The Yankee dugout went crazy. Yeah, you make up your own mind on that one, folks. Well, I thought he was safe. Yes, sir. Now, there's the foot going for the bag and on the bag. Where's the ball? No ball. Ball's right there. Just about ready to get through his glove. Puts on the back. Here's the ball. Well, whatever. He's out. Billy Martin ran out there. You argue with him, but you're not going to get an umpire to change the decision. That's for sure. Those umpires are human. They're not machines out there. They're just like the players. They make mistakes once in a while. And right. Virtually all the time. Most of the time. 3-2. Yankees. As we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, well, Lee Lacy, Steve Yeager, and the pitcher wrote, Lee Lacy, fine athlete. Spent 50 games with the Atlanta Braves in 1976. Otherwise, he's been a Dodger all the way since 1969. This is a good ball game. It has the feel of game number one when they battled through 12 innings. That 4-3 to three Yankee victory. This is a one-run ball game. The Dodgers battling back. And Roden becoming a commanding figure on the mound. Lee Lacy, born in Longview, Texas. Swing! That hits the ball well to left. Pinella drifts over and loose. Got it. One out. Remember the old days, the 1950s? That great Dodger team with so much power. Campy and Hodges and Robbie and Perillo and the Duke and Andy Pafko 
And then when the Dodgers moved west, the team underwent a transformation. It wasn't everything as those Dodgers had, speed, power, defense. But it became a pitching team and it became a speed team with defense. And now somehow, suddenly, in the last year or two, the Dodgers have reverted to power, where sometimes their defense is suspect. Steve Yeager is up there, 30 years of age yesterday, and fouls the first one off for strike one. Oh, wait a minute. 30 years ago yesterday. Ah, I got you. Now I understand the information that Jerry Klein gave me. His uncle, Charles Yeager, who was uh, pictured the other day in, the, in several of the newspapers around the country, was the man who, that's fouled at the play, flew the X-1 rocket plane. And... Uh, 30 years ago yesterday. He was also the first man, if you recall, to fly faster than the speed of sound. Interesting man. Had a chance to meet him once upon a time, a long time ago. So here's his nephew, Steve Yeager, at the plate with a two-strike count. One out, the bases are clean, and Yeager hits it on the ground of the hole. Dent way back in the hole. Long throw. Got him. Good play by Bucky Dent. Bucky says playing on this infield to him feels very much like playing on artificial surface. The ball really caroms off this play surface. Watch it again. An exceptional throw by Dent. His break is the fact that Jaeger is not swift. Now Rick Roden, the Dodger pitcher, doubled and scored He's on base when Lopes homered. Looks a rip, doesn't he? He sure does. Gidry at 93 miles per hour on that pitch, Keith. Still throwing hard. And Roden's still swinging hard. He's, He's not getting strikes. cheated up there, is he? <laughs> no, he is. <laughs> it's that ball to center. Rivers goes back. Keeps going back. Now he's got the range, and the inning is over. And so Ron Guidry gets the bottom third of the Dodger order. All right, it's 3-2 New York. We'll be back with more baseball after this word from our local station. A 3-2 ball game, Yankees. And we'll be looking now at Willie Randolph, Thurman Munson, Reggie Jackson against Rick Roden. Randolph hitless in two trips and takes a strike. Big upset in that big eight. Look at there. Iowa State, Earl Bruce's bunch. They beat Nebraska 24-21 and Kansas tied Colorado. That big eight is something. Cyclones win one like that every year, oh, don't yeah, they? they do. yep. Always with the big upset. Outside. It's two balls and one strike now to Randolph. Line score on the ball game. The Dodgers two runs. Coming on a double by Roden and a home run by Lopes. The Yankees still pecking away, and it's a high pop on the right side. Darby settles under it, and he has it. What we made at the beginning of our telecast today, that it's the Dodgers playing long ball, and the Yankees clawing and scratching for their runs. Six home runs for the Dodgers in the series thus far, one for the Yanks. That by, to re-quote Keith, an unlikely source, Willie Randolph, hit his at Yankee Stadium, right down the left field foul line, short point in the ballpark. Here, however, is a man who can lose a road and fastball if Rick is not careful with it, Thurman Munson. He has hit into a double play and struck out swinging today. And Roden takes oh, the corner. He is firing. 93 miles an hour on that pitch. It's as fast as he's thrown. Outside. Well, it's a nice warm day. No reason why all pitchers who are involved, everybody in fact, shouldn't be loose and easy. Very comfortable day for a baseball game. It's two and one. Trying to sit right on that outside corner. There's an interesting shot from right field. Where's he hiding in the bullpen down in right field? Is that the Yankee bullpen? Down in that neighborhood. That's the way the bullpen crew gets to see the ball game. That's punched down the right side and bounces up in the crowd. 
Thurman says if they're going to keep pitching me off there, I'll just go ahead and go that way. And they are pitching, making him reach. They feel his power is on the inside half of the plate. They're trying not to give him anything in there. I imagine if they do go inside, they'll go inside bad off the plate. The rest of the time, they're just trying to sit right on that outside corner with Thurman. 24-year-old Rick Roden, 6'3", 195 pounds, living now in Long Beach, California, with a 2-2 count. On a native son of Ohio, Thurman Munson. Swings and foul tips it into Steve Yeager's glove, and Thurman has struck out for the second time today. That's that, about 13 in a row, isn't it? Right. That ball was passed, and Thurman looked behind him. He knew it. Reggie Jackson. Right How many there. is that? Is that 13 in a row? One, two. 12 in a row is retired. 12 in now. a row. He came in. He retired Nettles. 13. And then Bucky Dent punched that ground single to knock in the third run. Oh. And that was it. Reggie Jackson up now has doubled to the left field corner. Roden's high with it. That one 91 miles an hour. There it There's is. There's our jugs, man. Right behind home plate. That's one to show you that we're not creating those numbers out of fantasy. They're actually being timed, and it's very much the same sort of a device that uh, that friendly fellow in the uh, <laughs> uniform that up, or lay on just. <laughs> Remember when that radar trap comes along and they give you that twenty-five dollar speeding ticket? That's the same kind of thing they use right there. That was some power pitch he just threw past Reggie for a string swinging strike. One and one the count. Two out. Nobody on. Fly ball hit the left center. It's way Good back. Bye. It is gone into the left center field pavilion. Reggie Jackson. And suddenly Rick Roden's scoreless streak ends. Reggie got the pitch just where he wanted it. Out and over the plate. And this is a ballpark tailor made to Reggie Jackson. Let's watch him go to the dugout. Lou. Tavella. 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 Right there. I think this is a bad pitch. As a pitcher selection, I'm not talking about the placement of the pitch. Reggie's not been getting around on the fastball at all. They've been throwing the ball right by him. If you give him a breaking ball, it gives him a little bit more time to get the bad head out over the plate. I think if you get in a situation where you can keep throwing a hitter, keep pumping a hitter, just like that, you pump him, pump him, pump him, you got to make the hitter prove to you that he can hit your fastball. And Reggie hasn't gotten around on the fastball in the entire series. Lou Pinella up there now. The Yankees leading four to two, and Roden misses inside. It's one and one. That's forthright, Tom. Strike. One and two. Reggie hits a lot like that, though, at Yankee Stadium. They catch him. That, incidentally, was Reggie Jackson's third home run in World Series play. Just outside. It's two and two to Vanilla. How do you like the way Reggie Jackson, from that whole mess with Martin just two days ago, has come back? I'll prove myself where it counts, he says, in the batter's box. Struck out Vanilla. Yankees get a home run on Reggie Jackson's shot into the left center field pavilion. And after five and a half innings of play, the Yankees lead the Dodgers 4-2. Up there, it's pretty. Down here, it is too. And especially so if you are a Yankee fan, because the Yankees lead 4-2 going into the bottom of the sixth inning. Here's what's happened to the ball game. Yankees second, Jackson double, Vanilla single, Shambliss double, Nettles grounded out, Depp single, Yankees took a 3-0 lead. Dodgers third, Roden double, Lopes hit a homer over the center field fence, 3-2. Yankees six, Jackson home run, out of here at 390. It's 4-2 New York. Now to the top of the order for Davy Lopes, who had the home run for Los Angeles, their sixth. Again, I've got to reiterate, this is the guy that's going to make the Dodgers go if they're going to do something. He's got to get on. Here he is leading off an inning. That's exactly where he's done his best kind of work. Well, Getting the thing going for him. Walked in the first inning, stole second, then homeward. Back in the third, second time up. 
Guidry now has him one ball and one strike. A little bit high. Ron Guidry's first major league victory came against Kansas City back on April 13th. Billy Martin left him in the ball game against the hitter Hal McRae. Outside. And uh, Billy's comment after having left him in and having uh, Guidry succeed said he wanted to find out about his heart. Well, he obviously found out and Guidry gave him a heck of a season. Works him inside and for the second time in the ball game a patient baby Lopes as well. Did just what he didn't want to do there. Let Lopes get on. So the Dodgers get the leadoff man on here in the bottom of the sixth inning and it brings up Billy Russell with Reggie Smith moving to the on deck circle. Perfect fairness to the Dodgers. They've hit a lot of long shots today. Most notably the one requiring that great catch by Pinella. Russell's bat's been asleep though. He's two for 16. Swing and a miss. Shooting for that big hole between Chris Chambliss and Willie Randolph. A lot of space over there to hit the ball through. Low. You can see the area that opens up when you get a runner on first base. The first baseman comes over, has to hold the runner, and there's a huge hole on the right side of the infield. Low. Good one. Stirring in the Yankee bullpen now. Martin wants a man ready as quickly as possible. Probably Tidrow for one. Russell hits a high pop. It's going to hang up there a while, and Mickey Rivers comes galloping in from center to make the catch in very short center. Russell is really frustrated. He turned around, threw his bat almost halfway back to the Dodger dugout. Sparky Lyle working in the Yankee bullpen. Sparky's had two days without work. He thrives on work. Maybe he's had too much rest. He was in the Yankee clubhouse this morning before the bus got here. Some of the Yankees catfish. Sparky and a couple others were in there. We're having a cup of coffee. And I said, how many days in a row can you throw? Sparky says, oh, six, seven, about a week. And then I'll need a day off. He said, seven days. <laughs> Seven days in a row that he can throw. It's really unbelievable. He's got great attitude. Reggie Smith is up there now. Hitless today with Davy Lopes on first base. Yankees leading 4-2, bottom of the sixth. Low. I guess Sparky and Campbell have got to be the top relievers in the, uh, in the American, American League. League. Yeah. The National League, I guess you'd have to say Fingers and Lavelle. There goes Lopes. The throw. They got him. That's time they got him. And the reason was that time he didn't get the good jump. Thurman made another good throw. I think you're right, Howard. He didn't get a good jump this time. He was out fairly easily, too. Umpire delayed his call just to make sure John McSherry that Randolph had held the ball, and he did. Good so throw by Thurman Munson. Two out now, and Smith hits it out of play. High drifting foul. It'll come back in the crowd. Well, fingers, of course, getting back to your discussion of relievers, a refugee from the American League. Free agent out of the American League went to the San Diego Padres. Wow. Off Munson, I'll tell you, there are a couple of uh, hard throwing relievers who are going to be on the open market. And available in the re-entry draft November 4, it's Rich Gossage and Raleigh Eastwood. <coughs> Inside. The goose, that's what they call him in Pittsburgh, <laughs> Gossage, and he can fire the ball. I'll tell you. He is ornery on the mound, too. Yeah. He's an ornery fellow. <laughs> Tough cookie. Yes, he Kinda is. Kind of cruel. <laughs> Hit sharply, uh, Greg Nettles. And the inning is over. Ron Guidry getting the Dodgers in order. And after six, Yankees four, Dodgers two. 
Crowd today, 55,995. That's three more than last night's all-time record. 225,346 for the four games. <laughs> There's our buddy, Keith. Yeah. Rock and roll it. I've, he came over last night and introduced himself. And he's from Cleelum, Washington. Population about 5,000. That's... Uh, <laughs> Where'd you find him, that? Pete? He came over last night. What is he? Is he a drag racer, you said? Or yeah, he's a drag racer. Lived in New York, I guess. Just wanted to get out of the city. Went back to the country and uh, he picked up the series, uh, the playoffs at, uh, in Kansas City. And he's been traveling with a Yankee, apparently. He's a Yankee partisan. One and one. And having himself some fun. Have him over for dinner at Sherman Oaks? Nope. One and one on Chris Chambliss. No, is that though? <laughs> Greg Nettles on deck. Bucky Dent follow. Wonder if Jury would like to get up. Checks on it. It's three and one. The only thing I was really curious about is who does his hair. The star of shampoo. Three and two now. The Yankee first baseman. Rick Roden tagged by Reggie Jackson for a home run. Been touched by Bucky Dent for a single. That's all Roden's given. Chambliss hits it sharply at Garvey. Steve stays with it, does it himself. Now the Yankee third baseman comes on. So the young man who was the Dodgers' first round draft choice, Rick Roden, doing his thing. He was picked up in 1971 in the free agent draft. Greg does have an RBI today on a grounder in the second inning. But he's not been hitting. He's 2-12 for 12 in the series. His shoulder's been bothering him, Howard. After that fight he had in Kansas City, he's just not swinging well. He can't get that bottom hand through. Up the middle, Rose oh. flags it. Look what I found. Throws him out. Two down. That's exactly what it was. Be alive on that mound. You let that ball go. You're the next infielder. Sometimes self-protection. I know that feeling. <laughs> Good play by Rick Roden on them. Greg Nettles. Now it is Bucky Dent, the Yankee shortstop with two out and nobody on, a single and two trips. High by five ball to left. Dusty Baker drifting back. Going on back to the warning track to make the catch. So Boy, that ball, ball really carried. It really carried. It's a reminder of Lopes. Yankees gone in order. After six and a half, New York four, Los Angeles two. Four-two ball game. Home half of the stretch inning and Ron Say. Steve Garvey and Dusty Baker for the Dodgers. It's strike one as Say takes a cut at a get me fast ball and doesn't get it. Say has struck out and hit a fly ball to left field that was over the fence, but Lou Vanella kept it in the ballpark with a great leaping catch. A play of the ball game so far. Two strikes now on the Dodger third baseman. May have been the play of the series for that matter. My goodness, what a play he made. Sharply hit toward the hole, and it's in the left field. Meadows took a dive at it, deflected it just a little bit. Ronnie Say, base hit. That's only Ronnie's second hit in the series. He sure would have liked to have that home run. Here it is. Looks like a breaking ball. He got down, but right in the middle of the plate, I guess. Just off a great glove at third base. Say he's got good speed. I don't know if noodle as we used to call him in our days in Alaska could have thrown him out of first base. He played for the gold penners. One of the few balls. Huh? One of the few balls to get by Nettles. Not that Craig didn't make a good play on it. He did. So for the second inning in a row the Dodgers have the leadoff man aboard in Ron Say. Steve Garvey is up. Garmin and Lyle are active in the respective bullpens. That Mike ball Carter. went right, see that? Went right over where Mrs. Carter is sitting. The president's the mother is sitting with yeah. Mayor Tom Bradley of Los Angeles in an adjacent box, and she almost gone at the baseball. Through the courtesy of Bradley, who went for it like an old catcher. He's going after her again. No. 
Little to the right this time. <laughs> Two strikes on Steve Garvey. There she there is. That's Mayor is. Tom on the right. Garvey swings and misses and strikes out. I'll tell you, this Gidry, 94 miles an hour. A gritty little pitcher. Now must now face two more home run hitting right handers. Dusty Baker and don't think Lee Lacey can hit it out. Only Pinella stopped it. Harvey has struck out successively now in this ball game. Dusty Baker, fly ball to right, ground out third to first. And Gidry's high with Ron Say on first base. The Yankees on top, 4-2. Gidry's given only three hits so far in the game. Double by Roden, home run by Lopes. Foul. Outfield gives the respect to Baker. They play him deep all the way around. Baker's fly ball to Reggie Jackson. Back in the second inning, took Reggie onto the warning track. Down the shorter. Ball club down by two. Started Doug Rao. Yankees chased him. One inning plus. Baker checks and takes it high. It's two and one. Sparky Lyle remains active in the Yankee bullpen. Billy is ready to pull Ron at a second's notice if need be. Doesn't want to give up these two runs. There's a strike. It's two and two. Well, there sure wasn't anything wrong with that pitch. I'll tell well, you. he's making some fine pitches. I mean, excellent pitches. Not only throwing hard, but he's hitting the corner on a lot of good pitches. High pop to the infield. Willie Randolph circles, calls, Dent backs away. Willie has it. That's two down with Lee Lacy coming up. As you noted early, Lee, it's first Lee time Lee. you've seen Gidley. Describe your impressions and characterization of him off what you've seen, Tom. Well, a lot of times, Howard, you get a young pitcher like this that throws hard. You find real control problems. You know, a guy just concerned about throwing the ball over the middle of the plate. And here he is, you know, he's pitching the spots real well. Thurman told me earlier today. You know, I saw I was talking to him this morning that he moves the ball in and out very well. That even though he does wow, throw hard, he just he still has good control of his fastball. He moves the fastball in and moves the fastball out. Didn't he say Whitey Ford helped him a lot? I didn't hear him say that. Helped no, him work on the slider. Probably uh, in spring training, of course, I would imagine. Yeah. Whitey goes down to spring training with the Yankees. That pitch is high. Nettles defensively against Lee Lacey who can really jerk that ball down the left side. Nettles is way right tight against the third baseline. Back of the bag. There he is. Fouls it away. I tell you, the president's mother is getting a workout up there. That was just below them. She's going to get a souvenir pretty soon. One ball and two strikes before a crowd of 55,995 at Dodger Stadium. The Yankees leading four to two. The Dodgers trying to get something cranked up in the bottom of the seventh inning, but having little luck against Gidry. Side corner. Very close as a matter of fact. Close, but no cigar. Two and two now with two out. Checks. Thurman appeals at first base. Jim Evans of the American League does not react. Twice thwarted. Thurman Munson. Three and two to Lee Lacey. Ron Say. Two outs. Ron Say be going. There he goes. Pitch is fouled off. Yeager on deck. The 
Jaeger, too, having a very good series at the plate, Keith. Four out of 11 going into today's contest. Say goes, pitch taken, ball four. I'm looking in the Yankee dugout. Billy Martin didn't like it. He's yakking about something out there. I don't know if he's yelling at Thurman or what. No, he's yelling at the yeah. umpire. He thinks his pitcher was victimized by a bad call. Maybe two of them. Anyway, that's part of the Martin tactics and strategy. Put the umpire on the defensive. Maybe he'll get a break on the next call. That also make him mad. Right now, Jaeger with home run power is up there. As I said, he's had a good series at the plate thus far, though he's not gotten on today. Home run power. Say at second. Lacey the tying run at first. Pitch inside corner. Steve Jaeger. Now, now it's Jaeger. Jerry oh. Dale's going to take time out here. He's got Martin yelling at him, and he's got Jaeger yelling at him. Looks like he was trying to go outside on that pitch miss and went inside. Quite a bit. Gary Deal right there in good position to call that pitch. Two out, two on, 4 2 Yankees. Bottom of the seventh. Jaeger swings and misses, and it's two strikes. Roden on deck. Say at second. Lacey at first. 0-2 oh, now. You can see he's trying to go outside there. Gave him a sign to go outside. Thurman sat outside that time. It's one of the few times that I've seen Thurman move with Gidry. He usually gives the target with his glove. That time he moved his entire body the outside part of that plate. Jaeger stayed alive. So did Lee Lacey until finally he got the walk. Chambliss coming over now to have a little chat with Gidry. That could be on orders from Billy Martin, too. Might be. Billy's up on the step of the dugout watching. Could be to remind him that the count is 0-2. You know, he's way ahead of the hitter. The pitcher in this situation doesn't want to make a bad pitch. You make a good pitch here. Or make a pitch to set up your next pitch. The medal's at third. Gets the force at third on Ron Say coming down from second base. And so after seven innings of play, it is New York four, Los Angeles two. Back with more baseball after this word from our local station. These are beautiful shots of downtown Los Angeles taken from our helicopter. Giffer and Dandy Dunn, Monday night football as Roden throws the ball. To Ron Gidry, the Yankee pitcher, one of 15 Yankees protected in the American League expansion draft. All kinds of stories about this little guy that where he might have gotten away and didn't. Just 40 showing you the pictures of downtown Los Angeles. Don't make it too pretty now. We've got nine million out here already. And smog. <laughs> one and the, two. The mayor's sitting over there now. Don't be saying that. <laughs> and Gidry's gone. One out, top of the order, Mickey Rivers and Willie Randolph. Yeah, Mayor Tom Bradley is a bit beleaguered by the effort to bring the 1984 Olympic Games here. There's a wide segment of the community that uh, wants some guarantees, warranties that Los Angeles doesn't wind up with the hangover cost problems of other cities of recent times. In those post-Olympic years, that pitch is outside. Ron say again, in on the grass, as he has been since the second game. Playing him the way Pete Rose did. That pitch is outside. It's two balls and no strikes. Shadows now beginning to reach out into the foul ground. Within the next half an hour, it'll be near home plate. There's a strike. Rivers misses the punt attempt, and it's two and two. As the sun goes down, it, it becomes an increasing problem for the outfielder. You can see now, say, well, he has neither. He hangs right there, but Rivers goes the other way with it, and it's a high pop. And Davey Lopes makes the catch. 
So that's two Yankees down. And we'll go to Willie Randolph in a 4-2 ball game. New York leading. And batting in the top of the eighth inning. Tough, hard-fought ball game that developed into a pitcher's battle between Rick Roden and relief of Doug Rao after he, in effect, gave up three runs and brilliant performance by Ron Kitt. Pitch is high. Little sign from Poughkeepsie. I haven't been to Poughkeepsie since he quit rowing up there. <laughs> Garvey coming hard. It's on top of the dugout, out of play. You know, Roden really has done a super job since he's come in. I think he's made the one bad pitch to Jackson. He's really been super relief pitcher. There we are. Idea how warm it is today. Shirt sleeve day. Baseball, some say, meant to be played in the daytime. Tom, you like the daytime? I like the nighttime. Oh. Nice, cool nighttime. Roden's outside with that pitch to Randolph with the bases empty and no. When you pitched your strikeout record, it was not at night. It's a four o'clock game, and the shadows were just about like they are today. Exactly it was a little right. stuff right. to see. <laughs> no on that one. It's three and one now to Randolph. That's a strong-faced young man, and what a job he's done. Only Randolph without a hit tonight. That's hit to right. Lacey, fighting the sun, makes the catch. You can see him holding that glove up to guard against the glare. So Rick Roden gets the Yankees in order again after seven and a half, four-two, New York. Billy Martin is not pulling Reggie Jackson out of right field this time. He's done it a number of times previously, inserting that man, Paul Blair, for defensive purposes when he has a lead, such as he has now of two runs. But Reggie Jackson gets a turn at bat. Next inning, and he has doubled, and he is homer. Manny Mota now to bat for Rick Roden to lead off the bottom of the eighth inning, 0 for 2 in the World Series, at the big double against the Phillies in the National League playoffs. Ron Guidry, breaking pitch for a strike against Mota, the premier pinch hitter among the active players of today. Only Smokey Burgess in the record books, more productive. It's one and one. That right there was Guidry's 100th pitch in the ball game. Had a pretty good ratio of pitches. Two and one. I didn't Otis. like those last two pitches. That, that pitch looked like it got away from him. Another well, pitch before, a fastball up from way out of the strike zone. That's a breaking ball that was high. Ball is hip to right. Reggie looking, chasing, gloves it. One out. He didn't pull his uh, sunglasses down, did he? I guess the ball didn't carry enough to get up into the glare. Four decks here. You've got to get it up pretty high to get it beyond the crowd. And that side of the stadium is in shadow, so it might be of some help for them. Now the top of the order, Davey Lopes, who has been on base three times, walked twice and hit a home run. Bert Hooten and uh, Mike Garman are in the Dodger bullpen as Lopes hits it on the ground right at Willie Randolph, a slow roller, and he throws him out, two down. Well, the Dodgers are down to four outs. Gidry's making it look easy. Up till now. So far he has. Still throwing harder. Sparky Lyle is not throwing in the Yankee pen, but it, he has loosened already. It won't take him long to get ready if they need the call. It is now Hooten alone in the Dodger pen. Bill Russell, hitless in three trips and struggling with the bat in the series. Strike one. Low, ball one. Reggie Smith on deck. Russell fouls it off. Gidry working on a three hitter. Tom Lasorda, trouble. Ball club's only four outs away from being down three to one in this World Series. Inside. Two and two. Two out, nobody on. Remember how auspiciously Russell started yep. the series? Struck him out. 
So Ron Guidry dominating the game now. One inning to go. Yankees lead 4-2. Los Angeles, California. A concerned community right now because their baseball team is trailing by two runs as we go to the ninth inning. And on the mound, Mike Garman, big right-hander. I identified his home as Wilder, Idaho, the other night. Says he lives in Caldwell, has a farm in Wilder. Well, they ain't very far apart, no how. Is that right down the road? <laughs> Thurman Munson is up there with Reggie Jackson and Lou Pinella. Scheduled to follow. Breaking pitch hangs inside. For Thurman, it's one and one. Garmin came to the Los Angeles Dodgers from Chicago, the Cubs, with Rick Mundy. <coughs> Did a rather good job the other night in New York for Los Angeles. Threw hard when he was in. Rick sure. wrote in a book on him, seven innings, faced 22 batters, allowed two hits, dead single in Jackson's home run. One and two. Ball is hit to right field. Short. Lacey coming in a hurry. Lopes goes out, can't get it. Throw back to Garvey, and Munson is aboard. Well, you take him any way you can get him. There's a little jam shot that fell in. Lopes could have had trouble with his son. Thurman struck out twice today, hitting a double play. Five out of the last seven times he struck out. He just pops it up. Just like it has eyes, it falls right in front of Lacey, right behind Davy Lopes. Lopes had a shot at it. It have been a good play for him to catch it. Here's the big man. Shot a double into the left field corner and a booming home run over the 395-foot mark in deepest left center. Comes inside to him. This is ball one. With the long swing or the long stroke, everybody tries to come to Reggie inside. High fly ball, left center field, Reggie Smith. Drifting over under it and makes the catch for out number one. That's the same line that uh, Reggie Jackson hit his home run. Didn't quite get enough of that one. Didn't get to it. Always hit the ball back in the strike zone and set out in front. Loop and Ella now. Has had the play of the game defensively against Ron Say, going above the wall to Rob Say of a home run to left. Trojans are doing a job for you today, Tommy. They lead Oregon 33 to nothing in the third quarter. I like that. Music to my ears. Up the middle. Lopes, Russell, first base, bounce, double play. So the Dodgers down by two runs at three outs left. Back more after this message of the word from our local station. There's Paul Blair now in right field. Billy Martin got that extra turn at bat out of Jackson. Two-run lead. There's Reggie exhorting his teammates on. Bottom of the ninth. Dodgers trail by two. Three outs left. Ron Guidry will pitch to the muscle in the Dodger batting order. Reggie Smith, Ron Say, Steve Garvey, Dusty Baker, the fourth man. 4-2 Yankees. Bottom of the ninth inning. And Smith takes the pitch low. Marky Lyle, the left-hander. Dick Tidrow, the right-hander for New York. And Guidry is in with a strike. It's one and one. Tomorrow's scheduled pitchers, Don Gullett, left-hander, New York. Don Sutton, right-hander, Los Angeles. Pitches low. Well, if anybody's going to do it, these are the guys that have been the big guns for him all year. They are, for however, today, players. Tom, one for nine. Yes, sir. High to the right side. Randolph back, waves everybody away, and... Makes the catch. Bad pitch out of the strike zone. Tom, you don't want a second guess so fine a man and so fine a manager as Lasorda. But Reggie Smith is simply not the hitter right-handed than he is left-handed. 
Why bat him third? Well, you've got personalities to deal with, too, Howard. That's one reason. One reason why he left Ron Say hit the cleanup all year long. Ron, he had a great April in his first 17 ball game. And then went into a slump, but he kept him there. Shot. Fair ball. ball. Into the corner, Say. Nothing going for two. Vanella has it. Say goes in. Double. Now the tying run will come to the plate with Steve Garvey and Billy Martin is on the field to argue over the call as to whether or not the ball was fair or foul. Well, I'll tell you right now that uh, Nestor Shylock, who is one of the better ones around, was right on top of it. Can't see it there. Not going to change that decision. No way. Nettles immediately points to the spot. He claims the ball landed. Martin now back in the dugout as we look at Nettles. Steve Garvey at the plate has struck out successively against Gidry and popped out to the first baseman. A 4-2 ball game with one out. Ron Say at second base. Right. You know, Say at second base got double or single and got robbed of a home run. He had a chance to have an outstanding day at the plate. Harvey goes to the right side. Well back. It is in the right field corner. It is foul. Oh, boy. Remember, the Dodgers came from behind to tie the Yankees in the opening game. They are, as we said, a combative ball club. There's no quitting this team. Tidro and Lyle hard at work in the bullpen. Two strike count on Garvey. One out. Garvey representing the tying run at the plate. Over the pitcher to Randolph at second. A throw in time. Two out, say, goes to third. So they are down to one out. If they lose, trailing three to one in the World Series, they will have to look back to baseball history for hope of winning the World Series. In 1968, as Martin comes out to talk with Gidry and check the situation with his catcher, Thurman Munson. In 68, the St. Louis Cardinals led the Tigers three games to one. The Tigers won that World Series. In 1958, the then Milwaukee Braves led Casey Stingles Yankees three games to one. The Yankees won that World Series. So twice in history, it has happened. Satisfied that Gidry is still strong enough and with the reassurances of Thurman Munson, Martin returns to the dugout, and Dusty Baker, certainly with home run power, comes to the plate. He represents the tying run. Bert Hooten went all the way for the Dodgers in game two last night. Mike Torres all the way for the Yankees in game three. Gidry trying to go all the way for the Yankees in game four. In with a strike to Dusty Baker. The last time you had three straight complete games in the World Series was 1968 when it was Lolich, McLean, and Lolich for Detroit. Correct. Still throwing at 93 miles per hour, by the way. Strike two. Thurman is just doing an absolutely super job catching the ball. He's given directions to his pitcher. He's given great targets. He did the same thing last night with Torres. He is really doing an outstanding job behind the plate. Inside, one and two. One more strike, and he's got it. It'll be Sunday afternoon if he can get it. Tommy Lasorda is going to have to think of something. Get his Dodgers back in the third. If he can get it. See Thurman, I see Thurman. Look, giving him a little sun. Now, this will probably be a breaking ball down. Way down. He wanted it on the ground. It was the breaking ball. Didn't get it down deep enough. Close. Baker, still alive. 
at two and two. Thurman, let's see where he wants the ball. Hits the center. River. Yankees win it. 4-2 as Ron Guidry goes all the way with a four-hitter. Struck out seven, he walked three. No question about it. The smallest southpaw was the dominant figure today. So for the second straight day, Yankee pitcher, Guidry today, Taurus yesterday, has been supreme. The Yankees got hitting against young Doug Rao in the second inning. They exploded for three runs as their left-handed hitters collaborated for a change. Jackson with a double and Chambliss with a double. Each into the left field corner. Later, Reggie added a home run. Keith. Big day for the Yankees and the Heat now really, really, really on the Dodgers at their home ballpark. As you can see, New York four runs, seven hits, no errors. Los Angeles two runs, four hits, and no errors. Doug Rouse started. The Yankees jumped on him for three runs. Rick Roden came in, was brilliant in relief, but Ron Guidry owned this day as he went all the way. And we'll be going to our scoreboard show for a rundown on all of the scores from around the country in college football to this time. The Yankees four, Dodgers two.